Hey guys, Fishmonger here. Uh, a little bit different of a video. As you can see, it's a little shaky. I'm holding the webcam in my hand because I got an extension cord, a USB extension cord, and I actually want to bring it over to my rig because um, I've never really shown my rig. I always like look over at it while I'm filming, but I've never really shown it. So since I just made some pretty big upgrades, I figured now would be a pretty opportune time to do that. Um, and for instance, if we were to travel down here, you can see with the webcam. This is great. I have like so much freedom. Um, these are the two motherboards I used to have. Basically, this is a Gigabyte, what is it, the GA970A DS3, and that's the GA970A DS3P. Both of them are five PCI slot motherboards. Um, they're both based on uh, AMD platform. It's the AM3+. Plus. They both have Athlon 2X2 215 processors. So they're really cheap processors. I think I really picked them up for like five bucks each. And I've got uh, two sticks of two gigabyte memory in each one. So it's a total of four gigabytes each. The memory was like really cheap. It was like 25 bucks for the uh, for all four sticks. So, you know, all is said and done, this was like a $70 motherboard. I bought this brand new. This one was like 60 bucks, I think. Um, and I got this used. It's like 25 bucks for the memory and like five bucks for the processor. So for all of this together, it was fairly cheap. I mean, it was like maybe 150 bucks or so um, for the whole setup. And it was nice because I had, um, you know, two setups that I could run. I had two power supplies and I also had um, two, you know, uh, hard drives set up and all that good stuff. And I had the capacity for 10, uh, mother or 10 GPUs because I could do the five on this one and I can do the five on this one. But now... What I've got over here is the new motherboard. This is the Asus uh, B250 Mining Expert. And I do have to apologize. I'm probably not going to get the video. Hold on, let me try to stabilize this. I'm probably not going to get the video in the best spot every single time because I'm looking to the left of me, which is where the monitor is, that I can view the video that I'm recording. And I'm looking to the right of me to actually record everything over here. So this is a technically 19 GPU motherboards. So I can get 19 GPUs on there. There's basically uh, 19 PCI slots, and i got to be careful, this is actually on. Um, however, from what I understand, it's generally accepted that you can run 12 on there without doing any crazy modifications, and you can get 19 if you hook up 12, and then the additional slots are used by the uh, GP106 mining um, cards from NVIDIA. So I, I'm more than likely not going to buy those cards for whatever reason. They're like super expensive. Um, so I'm probably just going to use the 12 slots, which is fine because I got this motherboard for like 100 bucks, And this motherboard for $100 has two additional slots compared to those two motherboards that I was using over there. So I had a capacity of 10 GPUs here. But now with this one board, I have a capacity of 12 GPUs. And the main reason I wanted to do this is because, you know, you figure the cost of investment for the whole thing is actually a lot cheaper now because I only have to have one motherboard per 12 GPU. So if you do the math, it's a lot cheaper than investing the uh, one motherboard here for the five GPUs and the one motherboard for the five GPUs. Um, it's, it's a lower cost. It's a lower initial cost of investment. And, you know, it's funny. I debated on whether or not I actually wanted to get like a 12 or, um, you know, uh, like a really high end, like what is it? Uh, ASRock has the one, the 12 GPU. Um, motherboard and of course there's the um the other one from oh gosh what's that manufacturer the one with like the, the hammer on the front i can't think of the name right now it's like the tbc pro i think it's gigabyte um has a um a motherboard that's also 12 plus but then this asus one though this mining uh expert they call it with the potential for up to 19 i just figured you know what if down the road those other gpus get super super cheap I've just really got myself a uh, lot of growing room here. So basically, in this rig, what I've got is, um, what is it, five, ten, I got 11 GPUs in here right now. On the top, uh, it's an Asus. This is a 1070. This one's a 1070. Uh, 1070 Ti. Oh, I'm. you can't see that, sorry. 1070, I, I got to look at the screen. Uh, 1070, 1070 Ti, 1070 Ti, and 1070 Ti. Um, that's the top rack. I got some cooling fans in the back there, and then there's a power supply, a server power supply that's actually powering those five GPUs. I'm sorry, there's actually a sixth one. I had no room. I'm totally going to redo all this, but 
There's a GPU right there. That's a 1050. Where is it? Yeah, right there. Just kind of hanging out on the back. It's really, it's not going to go anywhere. It's certainly not winning any awards for being pretty, but I had an extra riser card and that thing didn't need any additional power. So I just kind of slid that in there. And then on the bottom here, I've got five. These are the EVGA uh, 1060s. Um, and they're all set up here. And they're actually being powered by that server power supply on the bottom. I ran out of cards um, with the uh, riser cards, which is why this 1060 is sitting here doing nothing. Uh, but I do plan on redoing this whole rig at some point because, you know, I used to have the two where the motherboard was here and the power supply was there. I got to hold this still. The motherboard was there. The power supply was there. And then I had the five video cards and then I had a motherboard power supply and then five video cards. I had two separate rigs. Uh, you know, two Ethernet cables, two hard drives, two, two CPUs, obviously all that stuff. Now, with the one motherboard, I basically consolidated everything. So I'm going to make a whole new rig that basically houses everything in one shot. And again, one of the nice things about having this one motherboard is, you know, the one CPU cost, the one memory stick cost. This was DDR4, so it was a little bit more expensive, but nothing crazy. Uh, but, you know, the one PSU, I still have... Where is it? Oh, here, uh, the addition. I have, now I have an extra Corsair CX650M. So if I actually wanted to set up another rig in the future, I have a, an extra power supply all ready to go. All I need is a couple other server power supplies. I can make some more power cords, and, and I'm all set. So this, um, you know, a lot of people were asking, and I've, I've heard a lot of questions about these cards, and I apologize again for the video. I'm going to be all over the place because it is hard to look left and right while I'm trying to film. But... This uh, B250 Mining Expert, in the back there, you can't really see, but there's three ATX power supply connectors. Let me see if I can get the light over there a little bit better. Okay, so there's three ATX power supply connectors. There's one where the cord is actually plugged in. Whoop, that's the light in the way. There's one where the cord is plugged in. There's another one in the middle, and then there's another one over to the side. Um, and then in the front, you can see here, if I can get this... On the front, there is right here, here, and here, there's three different Molex power connectors. And a lot of people ask, do you need to use all of the power connectors on this board? And the simple answer is no, you don't. If you're using powered risers, you only need to use the one ATX power connector in the back to power the board. And then, of course, the, uh, the four-pin connector here for the supplemental power for the CPU. And that's it. After that, it's as simple as just plugging in all your risers and then plugging in the power to your GPUs like you normally would. You don't need to plug into these Molex connectors here in the front. You don't need to use those secondary plugs in the back. Quite honestly, I just think they made this board a lot more complicated than they needed to um, because it's just a lot of extra power connectors and a lot of extra wiring that wasn't required um, but i can see the benefit let's say people wanted to run really expensive really high powered cpu psus like this you know get a couple of 1500 or 1800 watt supplies you can plug them directly right into this motherboard plug them directly into here and then you wouldn't need the powered risers but you, you know who's running a rig without powered risers everybody's running powered risers so it's like it's just, all this was just unnecessary they could have just simplified the, the layout on this board and saved themselves some money, sold the board a lot cheaper, and everyone would be happy. Um, you know, you buy the board, it'd be less complicated to set up. People would look at it and go, whoa, this thing has got, you know, they wouldn't say it's got so many connectors, this is crazy, I don't understand it. They'd completely understand it, and it would just make a lot more sense. So, I, I have some ideas. I don't exactly know what to do. But this is actually nice. It just so happens to work out that... Um, with my two rigs here and here, um, I actually can pretty easily, you can see I got the motherboard in the middle and I've got the red cords going down to the five cards here and the blue cords going up to the five cards there. So having the motherboard in the middle is kind of nice because I don't have to stretch the, cart, the cords out really far. Basically, I can just take the, um, you know, the, the, the setup with the way it is and the motherboard's like in between the GPU. So I, I kind of like that. I may expand on that and build a whole new case with the motherboard in the middle with the five and the five. Or part of me was actually thinking of making a whole case where I consolidated the space a little bit more. Like right now I've got like a two and a half inch gap 
I think, between the cards here. And it's spaced evenly on all of them. And quite honestly, it's probably overkill. I don't need that much of a gap. You know, I've, you can't really see them, but I've got 120 millimeter fans blowing forward over all these cards. So there's pretty good airflow. But these cards run cool. They're, they're really cool. I mean, the hottest they get is maybe 58, 60 degrees Celsius. And I've only got the fans like 65%. Um, Cause one of the things I always try to do is buy cards with really good coolers. Um, I don't want to get uh, the cheapo coolers. I want to get some really beefy coolers. Um, so I think I could build a case or a rig that's very aesthetically pleasing. I don't know. Part of me wanted to kind of make like a, maybe like a card here, a card here, a card here, maybe like a rainbow kind of thing with cards kind of going in, in like a half circle. Part of me said I wanted to kind of put the motherboard in the middle and then kind of have like a spiral kind of going up with the motherboards. I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm feeling kind of creative about this. Part of me wants to just make a creative rig. So if anybody's got some ideas on like a creative rig for this, um, I'm totally down for it. I, I, I am totally down. I think that'd be awesome. But let me just take this here. I'm going to plug this in. So this is going to be my monitor getting plugged into here. So now I've got, I should have a display output Let's see here. Okay. So this is going to be very shaky for a quick second. I apologize. I'll get this good in one second. Let me get this camera set up. Might take a couple of seconds. Yeah. Let me uh, do that and uh, something like that and turn that. And yeah, that looks good. So it's really crooked. I've been drinking, but I know that's the camera that's crooked. That's not me. So this is, I'm running a uh, Hive OS right now. Let me remotely log into this and you'll be able to see. Okay, so I'm running a terminal screen. So now I'm actually using my computer to remotely control the, uh, the rig here. And I'm gonna actually go into the operating system. I'm going to shut this off because I'm gonna restart it. And I just wanna show what this looks like on boot. So let me pull this up here. I guess what I can do is, um, let's see here, shut down, okay. This is gonna go away a second. And uno momento, por favor, I gotta go grab a keyboard and plug it in. All right, I have a keyboard and mouse plugged into my rig now. So I'm going to power it on. And we should get on the screen, the boot up screen. It's actually kind of nice. There's like a nice little graphical screen here tells you uh, which GPUs are plugged in, which ones are working, which one isn't. I'm going to try to get into the BIOS. Hopefully I hit those buttons fast enough. I probably didn't. Oh, I did. Look at that. Okay. So how do I fix this? This is a cool BIOS, man. I'll tell you what, I'm old school. So I, pretty much BIOSes to me are like text and all that stuff. But you know, like what is it? This? this is some cool ass shit. I'm, I get, I, I, you know, I need a new computer, man. I'm running a, uh, what is it? A Athlon. I got an FX 8370E or something like that. It's like an old, old, old school FX processor. I mean, it gets the job done, but, um, it's on an old, old micro ATX motherboard. And, uh, my personal computer is definitely lacking, but, um, this, uh, these new, uh, BIOSes and stuff that I got nowadays, man, this is, this is just some cool shit. So anyway, um, basically, it's telling me it's the B250 Mining Expert. You can see I got a Pentium uh, G4400 in here at 3.3 gigahertz. It's 4 gigabyte of RAM, DDR4. I am running um, Samsung memory, apparently. It's just a cheapo 4 gig uh, memory. And, you know, it's got the cool little graphic here for the CPU fan. And, and I have the fan curve on slow right now because it's uh, the CPU basically does nothing. It's at 5% or 10% load, so it doesn't get very hot. So if I come into, let's see here, what do I have for options? I can go to advanced mode. Um, all I did when I initially set this computer up, I literally plugged everything in. I came into the BIOS and I went to mining mode enabled. That's the only thing I changed. Now, there might be other things that I can change to make stuff better. Um, like, for instance, uh, what is it? This is the monitoring on everything. Um... I, I, to be honest, this is the first time I'm looking at this. I never really bothered looking at it, all this crap. 
Um, I mean, I, apparently it looks like I could change the core ratio and overclock my CPU and, and DRAM and all that crap if I wanted to, which I don't because I don't do any mining on the CPU and it's only a Pentium G4400, so it really doesn't have much power to it to begin with. But let me exit this and I just want to show you how fast this boots up. Okay, wow, my mouse, it's on my bed right now, so it's uh, a little twitchy. There we go. Discard. Sure. So this is going to boot. And instantly, bam, it goes right into the SSD. It's loading up on HiveOS. Um, I actually used to run HiveOS on a um, USB drive. And it worked fine. However, it certainly wasn't as snappy. And, you know, 64 gig, 32 gig SSDs are just so cheap nowadays. You know, the speed advantage you get is worth it for the investment. So any, any new rig I, I run from now on, if I'm running a Linux system, I'm definitely going to be throwing an SSD on there. So you can see this is this is going to boot right up, and it is going to just go right into Hive. It's going to apply all my overclocking settings on all the uh, GPUs, and it's going to automatically load up the miners, which right now I have the GTX 1060s running Ethereum. They're hitting about 22 mega hash a second, and the other cards in there, which is the 1050, the 1070s, and 1070 Ti, uh, they are running Equihash. And I believe it is just Zcash right now. But I'll be able to confirm that in a second once the screen pops up. You can see here it's going through the 10 GPUs. Uh, there's the list of everything uh, that is on there. So you can see the uh, 1060, 1070 Ti, 1070, yada, yada, yada. So if I come into here and basically I'm going to open a second window. And if I type in minor, you'll see... This is um, DSTM. This is the one miner that's running. Because, again, I have this set up to boot, and it's going to load two different miners. And I have it programmed to load the two different cards. Or basically, the two different uh, miners are going to run um, different cards. So in the background here, you can see this is um, the three gigabyte cards. Uh, Dagger Hashimoto, they are mining Ethereum. They're all getting about 21 to 22 mega hash a second. There's five cards currently hooked up. And then basically these are the uh, other six GPUs um, that I've got because, again, it's 11 total. And it's about 2,500 uh, total solutions per second for Equihash here. So this is mine in NiceHash uh, over here. And the same thing over here. I'm just mining to NiceHash just because the payout's been pretty good lately. And um, it's actually convenient for me because I've been getting the payouts directly in Bitcoin. been throwing over everything to um, uh, Bitrix and then basically uh, buying up some uh, altcoins. I'm looking for some quick gains for some quick sales. So, uh, anyway, this is uh, my quick video on the B250 uh, mining expert from Asus. Uh, simple plug and play, man. I literally just threw the CPU in there, threw the GPU in there, or the GPUs in there. Um, I threw the memory in there, and since you know I've run Hive before, it was already kind of running on the um, uh, the SSD. When I plugged this SSD into this motherboard, it did assign a new IP address internally, um, but so basically, for me to remote into it, I had to just change the IP address settings in the VNC viewer. Uh, but after that, it was just instant. Like, it just up, running, boom, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, and then as far as the, the power supplies go, you know, people were asking about... Let me bring the uh, camera over. People were asking about... And, well, let me unplug all this shit. I'm totally going to knock all these cords over. I don't need these anymore. People were asking about, you know, running multiple power supplies in a multiple GPU setup, and are you going to have any issues with uh, the voltages being a problem? If they're, if they're off, do you have to ground them all together? And I haven't had any problems, and mainly it's because I have, all, I have three power supplies. There's the server power supply up top there. There is a ATX PSU here, and another server power supply down there. All cords run into a um, outlet switch here, then they all run into one outlet in the wall. Most importantly, every GPU, whether, like basically this 1070 here has got the riser and then the external power and then you know, the riser and the external power, yada, yada, yada. The, um, this GPU here is powered directly by the uh, power supply in the back. Same with this one, power supply in the back. Same with this one, power supply in the back. They're all wired into that. I'm not mixing and matching the risers and the external power supply um you know the external connectors there that's one of the big issues you can't do that i blew up a motherboard before 
by accidentally doing that. I wasn't paying attention. And I had the power from one of the rails here going into the riser, and I had the power from the other power supply feeding into the GPU, and there must have been a, um, a load differential or something, and basically it fried the motherboard. It was smoked up. Thankfully, that was under warranty from Newegg, and they don't ask questions. Um, so that was really nice. I, was, I managed to get a completely uh, complete free replacement board on that. But uh, and then down here, this power supply here is basically just feeding the power to these six cards. And that's it. And, the, you know, the, the, I love these, these boards here, man. They've got those little um, external... Where is it? Can you get in there? I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. But there's that black cord kind of right next to the disco light that kind of goes up over there. Basically what that is is just, I wired that up. That's a floppy disk connector, okay? That cord goes up and plugs directly into this power supply. And then I've got another one on the other server power supply back there that goes up and plugs directly into this power supply. So whenever the motherboard is turned on and it senses power from this power supply, it automatically sends uh, a signal to those two server power supplies and they instantly turn on at the same exact time. So there's no issues with uh, one being on, one being off and having to worry about timing with the powering and of everything. It's just uh, all coordinated. It's, it's really, really good. So uh, this is Fishmonger. I'm going to sign out. Uh, but anyway, B250 mining expert. If you can, you pick this thing up cheap. I got this thing for 100 bucks on eBay, man. 100 bucks for 12 cards and some future proofing is excellent. I do recommend this thing. And, you know, save yourself the trouble of buying. You know, why buy a whole bunch of five GPU motherboards and spend twice the amount of money? Just get a 12 GPU motherboard or, you know, 6 GPU motherboards. A lot of people buy the 6 GPUs or then they get a one with a 6 GPU with an MSATA adapter and all that stuff. Yeah, by the time you spend all the money on that, just get yourself a freaking 12 GPU motherboard and call it a day, man. Because this thing is definitely uh, worth it, definitely easy to set up. If you do mining at all, um, don't be afraid to, to work with something like this. And I nicknamed this the Bahama Mama because this thing certainly is a Bahama Mama and it's going to be making me some cash. So this is Fishmonger. I am signing out. I will catch you on the flip side.